We're going to continue our journey through the book of James, um, titled Straight to the Point, because James gets straight to the point. And uh, so today we're going to kind of move into a, a, a different area of sorts, because um, as Gary prayed, as we live our journey in this life, uh, how we live is a reflection of how connected we are to Christ. And, and so it's not, uh, it's not about making sure we do all the right stuff. It's making sure we pursue Christ to the point that all the right stuff just naturally flows out of us. And so James, uh, in, this, in this passage we're going to look at today, he gets a little personal. And so I'm just going to warn you up front that for some of us, like me, this one really hurts. All right? So just be aware. Be open. Let the Spirit of Christ move in you and, uh, and let him transform you because if you're like me, uh, this one, James, just might as well just hit me in the nose. Okay? And so, uh, but as we follow Christ and as we're connected to him, there becomes a lifestyle. There becomes a reality that's normal for us as followers of Jesus and what we should look like because the world needs to see us differently. They need to see that we are not of this world. And, and the characteristics of those who, of us who follow Jesus should be different than those, uh, those who don't. So, turn with me to James chapter 1. James chapter 1, verses 19 through 27, and page 1216 12, if you're using the Pew Bible. And again, just sit back and bear the punches that are going to come. <laughs> James 1, 19. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be Quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues it in it, not forgetting what they have heard but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves, and their religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Ouch, ouch, and ouch. All right? Now, there's a lot of different directions we could go and a lot of things that we could talk about, but I want to focus on just two of them today. And we're going to look at it this way, that James talks about how we should interact with people and then how we should respond to God. Okay? So let's look at it in those two lights. And the first one is, is how we should interact with people. What should that look like? And here's what he says. He says that we should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Now, you look at our American culture, and man, this is a message we need to hear so desperately today, right? The idea of quick to listen, and we'll just go through them quickly, that the quick to listen is something we really struggle with. Now, I don't know if you've ever been in a conversation with anyone, or maybe you are a culprit in this, but the whole time that they're talking to you or the whole time you're talking to them, you're looking at a screen, does that happen to anybody? Right? They're holding their phone or they're answering the email or they're answering a text or they're looking at something or, oh, I got to take this call. And you're sitting right across the table from them and it's like you're not even there. All right? Quick to listen. Translated means pay attention. Pay attention to people. Do you know how desperately people want to have attention paid to them today? How desperately they want somebody to care? How desperately they need someone to look them in the eye and act like they matter? It doesn't happen. 
And so this idea of being quick to listen is really so foreign to our culture right now because we're so connected, we don't listen anymore. We need to be careful to be quick to listen. So we're quick to listen and then slow to speak. And for some of us, this is where this gets really painful. Slow to speak. Slow to speak. Slow to speak. And see, now I, I'm one of those that that's not natural for me. And sometimes I speak so quickly, the words come out and I have to decide whether or not I agree with what I just said. Okay? And, and I'm also the kind that I, I, a good debate is just fun for me. And I'll pretend like I believe something I don't just to have a fun discussion. And, and, and it's, that's ridiculous. It's something I struggle with and have to fight with. And I found, I found this verse this week, and I haven't memorized it yet, but I want to. It's Psalm 141.3. It says this, Set a guard over my mouth, Lord. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Set a guard over my mouth, Lord. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Because we like to speak quickly. And we want, as if everybody's concerned about what we feel or think, we want to share openly with what's going on. And it's interesting that God gave us two ears and one tongue. Perhaps we should listen twice as much as we speak. But sometimes we just need to step back and process what's going to come out of our mouth. And think about how it's going to affect people that hear. Because sometimes words are so hurtful, and so demeaning, and so horrible, that people need to hear words of encouragement and positive things from the followers of Jesus. But then, if that's not enough, quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Now, I don't, I don't know about you, but it seems like to me that everybody's mad. You ever turn on the TV and it's like, my goodness, everybody's mad. And there's a bumper sticker out there. I saw it again this week that said, if you're not outraged, you're not paying attention. So now are not only people mad, they're mad if I'm not mad. <laughs> right? And, and so it, it's just that everybody's angry. There's something to be angry about, and if you're not angry, they're going to be mad at you for not being angry. And so I've decided I'm going to be angry because everybody's angry. It makes no sense, right? But that's, how, that's where we live, and anger is just flowing everywhere. And this, um, so this election that's going on, there's anger everywhere, and it's become normal. But it's not normal for followers of Jesus. Do, do you see what we're saying here? So I went grocery shopping the other day, and I don't know if anybody else does this, but I always check every single checkout line to find the shortest one. And usually I take enough time doing that that I could have already been out, but I just want to make sure I go through the fastest way possible. So uh, I have to decide, all right, do I want to be behind the person that has a, a basket that's really full, or do I want to be behind three people that have just a few things? Let me watch the cashier for a second and see how quick they are. Right? So I'm processing this. So the other day, uh, there's a line and there's one man in it. I'm like, all right, this is it. This is the spot. I'm going to get my stuff and get out of here. And so I get in line behind a man who is 67 years old, he's a Christian, and he's mad. Now, how do I know all this? Because he was telling everybody, all right? I don't ask people how old they are, and I don't, if I haven't met them, I don't just come up and say, hey, are you a Christian? So he just, he was, boy, he was letting the cashier have it. She was about his age, and they were going back and forth, uh, and, and not going back and forth, I mean, she was just listening. And so he was, went off, man, he was, um, he was talking about the new generation, how horrible they are. He was talking about who he was going to vote for because it's the only one that makes sense. He was going on and on about everything that's wrong with their society, about how angry he was. And then he said, 10 years from now, this place, this country is going to be horrible, but it's okay because I'm 67. I'll probably be dead by then. And I know where I'm going. And he was mad about it. He knew where he was going. <laughs> Fortunately, 
I had been studying James chapter 1. And so in my mind, I was saying, quick to listen, slow to speak, clo slow to get angry. Quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to get angry. Quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to get angry. Because this poor lady behind the counter, she had no clue what to do. She was just trying to get the stuff done. And just, her eyes were real big, and it was like, I wish she'd be quiet. And so I had this whole speech in my head that I was ready to give this guy. I mean, it was, but I was quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to get angry. So I, 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 didn't, say any, I didn't say anything, but man, it was a good one. Because I was going to walk out in the parking lot with him, and I was going to say, I bet I know what church you go to. And this is how I played it out of my head. Oh, really, which one? ABC Church. Oh, how did you know that? Because everybody I've ever met from that church is either mad or mean. And you're both. <laughs> I didn't say that. It didn't happen. That's what my little mind processed. But thankfully, I was studying James 1. Quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry. And I look back on the conversation that... the one-sided conversation that he had with the, the lady that was checking him out. And the one thing she said was, because he said, I'm 67, I'm going to die, so, but I know where I'm going. She said, well, where are you going and how do you know? <laughs> and he went off on the election. I was like, what? Hello? Hello? But see, that's what happens. We become so angry. And we want the world to know that we're angry. They need to hear how mad we are. Because after all, Jesus got mad in the temple and turned over the tables. Shouldn't we get mad too? But we often forget that Jesus is God. And he was mad because people... We're not honoring God. See, the world's mad. And as followers of Jesus, they need to see love. Because the truth is, is anger doesn't produce the righteousness of God. That's from us. And so the world needs to see something different. So as we interact with people, we need to be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. All right? We okay so far? We're hanging in there? That's pretty painful, pretty hard for some of us. That's a, that's a tough, I got a lot of work to do, right? But he doesn't stop. Darn it. Okay, so let's go on to the next part. And, and here's what he says, verse 22. Do not merely listen to the word, and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. And so, we talked about now how we interact with people and how, what that looks like for a, a follower of Jesus. In our relationship with God, it comes down to one word. Obey. Obey. And as we pursue Christ, and as we get closer to him, obedience is a natural outflow of who we are. And when we don't obey, guess what? It really bothers us. And if it doesn't really bother us, there's something wrong with us. Because it's normal for followers of Jesus to obey. It's normal for us to follow the teachings of Christ. It's normal for us to follow the teachings of Scripture. That's what followers of Jesus do. And one of the things that's the issue is that we know what to do so many times, but there's a disconnect between knowing and doing. We know we're supposed to be nice to people. We know we're supposed to turn the other cheek. We're no, we know we're supposed to help people in need. We know all of this stuff we're supposed to do, but there's a disconnect between knowing and doing. And James is saying, listen, you know what to do. Do it. Do it. 
And the more that you do it, and what happens to us as followers of Jesus, our character changes, and it just becomes a part of who we are. We don't even think about it anymore. But the problem is this disconnect between knowing and doing. In one of my classes, students have to work with a group and do a presentation. Uh, and they hate it, but that's just part of the assignment. And, and so I give them, in world religions, they are given obscure religions that we don't know much about, and they're supposed to teach the class about it. Happens every semester. And one, one semester, and actually it was last semester, uh, one of the students, he, he brought a box. And it came time for his presentation, his team, and he took the box up front and set it on the floor. And it came time for his part of the presentation, and he looked at me and said, I probably should have talked to you about before I do this. Now, in college, that's never something you want to hear. <laughs> because it mean, could mean several things. He may be about to start a fire. He may be getting ready to sacrifice a chicken. Or he may be getting ready to pass out drugs in the room. I don't know. And so I'm thinking, oh my goodness, what has he done? Well, when he opened the box and pulled out what he pulled out, those other three things really looked good to me. Because he pulled out his pet snake. Now, here's what's interesting. Because he did his presentation, he was done, he looked at me and asked me, would you like to hold my snake? <laughs> and so I began to process in my mind. Now, I know with everything in me, that snake's not going to hurt me. I mean, he's holding it. And I know enough about poisonous snakes to know, other than coral snakes, their heads all look the same. So I know that's not a poisonous snake. And I know that snake's not big enough to wrap around my neck and choke me. And everything in my knowledge, I know it would have been perfectly safe for me to hold that snake. I knew it. But I did what any good professor would do, and I said, you know, there's four or five students in the classroom that would like to hold the snake, so let them hold it <laughs> instead of me. Because I don't do snakes. And it, it's funny because I know all of the truth about it. I know that I could let that snake crawl over all over my arms and my hands, and it wouldn't affect me at all, and I would walk out fine. But there was no way I was going to cross the gap into practice. It took everything in me to pretend like I wasn't freaking out on the inside. But there was a huge gap between knowledge and practice. And I think it's important for us to understand as followers of Jesus that we can know everything the Bible teaches. And we can go to the grocery store and proclaim to everyone everything that we know. But when there's a gap between what I know and what I practice, something's wrong. Something's not right. Now, James will get this in great detail in chapter 2. But, but the truth is, we, we have to realize that it's not enough to know. Because if we know and we don't practice, what we have is a philosophy or an idea. And following Jesus isn't a philosophy or an idea. It's a way of life. And James was telling his world, look, we live in a time when people don't obey. We live in a time when, when following God and doing what he says doesn't make any sense. We live in a time when people aren't going to understand why we follow and do what we do. So we need to obey. And we need to do what he's called us to do. Because, see, we, we don't really belong here. This is just a temporary stop for us. We belong to the kingdom of King Jesus. And it should be normal for followers of Jesus to live that's, like that's where we belong. And so again, I, I don't want you to hear me say what I'm not saying. I am not encouraging you to obey so that God will love you. I am not encouraging you to obey so that you can have some extra benefit in your relationship with God. I am encouraging you that if you are having a hard time obeying, there is something in your relationship with God that's not right. 
And those should be red flags for you and for me. That something needs to be fixed. It's interesting, as James finishes this passage, uh, he talks about what obedience looks like. And look at verse 27. He said, religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. He says two things. Don't, don't fall into the, the pollution of the world. Don't fall into it. But he says, care for those who don't have anybody to care for them. Care for those who don't have anybody to care for them. And when we look at the world and we look at what's happening and we look at all the anger and the frustration and we look at all of the, all of the stuff that's going on, the world needs to see Jesus in us. So don't just know the word. Do it. And here's what I'm going to tell you. When you actually live the way that Christ calls us to live, it freaks people out. They think, what's wrong with you? And then they realize, oh, there's something about that. There's something about that that I need. It makes a huge, huge difference. All right, so now this is just a little side note here. And if Paul, the Apostle Paul were here, he would say it this way. This is not a command from the Lord, but this is something I'm telling you. If you find yourself angry all the time, you need to evaluate what's going on. Right? If you listen to a certain radio show or watch certain TV shows that are news things and you feel your heart race going way up and your blood pressure coming up and by the time it's over you're really mad, you might want to reconsider what you're watching and listening to. Because those people make money by making you mad. And the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Okay? So that's just a little side note, and I've said it to you before, but followers of Jesus, here's what you need to know. People in the grocery store don't care what we think about politics. They really don't. They don't care what we think about what's being voted on. They don't care. What they care about is, are you listening to them and paying attention to them? Do they matter? And if they don't, nothing else is heard. So let's love people and love God and show the world a better way. Let's pray.